Don't tell people what you know. The average person, they have no idea what's going on between them and the real world. The more control they have over money, digitally, electrically, the easier it is to do that. It's the greatest fraud that's been perpetrated on mankind this century. What do you tell people to do with their money, how to be aware of money, and how is money used in a similar way as a psychological tool? Money doesn't really exist, it's a theory. What are those guys doing? If you look at how the world's been acquired, it's been done by a banking scam where you lend people money that doesn't exist, we call it credit. Why don't we learn about money in school? Because the government doesn't let us teach that subject. This is why you're f***ing poor! We're all outside jumping around doing as they tell us. You know, you should save money. Okay, I'll save money. You should buy stocks. Okay, I'll buy stocks. You should put some money in bonds. Okay, I'll buy. We've been through a process of banks lending credit figures on a screen greatly in excess of what they have as assets called fractional reserve lending and when they can't pay it back because often the banks have made have taken actions that have crashed the economy like in 2008 the banks then get all the things they've lent money on the real wealth of the world and what's happened in this process of lending credit getting the real resources when they can't pay back the credit has sucked the wealth of the world, the real wealth of the world, into the hands of a very, very few people and left out there most of the rest of the population with something called money. And money only buys anything because we take it seriously. You know, if, 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 if it's just a piece of paper, and this is the point, it's meant not even to be a piece of paper, it's meant to, to be purely electronic. Um, and so we have this fresh air money that is worth something because the buyer and the seller believe in it and only because of that and the real wealth of the world has been sucked into the hands of a very few people by lending this scam called credit another interesting thing about it, this um, money situation is when you go to a bank and you say borrow 50,000 pounds they'll type into your account 50,000 pounds in credit. Where's the credit come from? Uh, uh, here. But you're not paying back uh, £50,000. You're paying back £50,000 plus interest. The interest is never created, only the principal. Because people think that governments create money. Money is overwhelmingly created by private banks issuing credit. That's, that's how so-called money comes into circulation. So, what this means is creating credit for the principal but not the interest is that at no point is there ever enough money, credit or otherwise, in circulation to pay back all the debt and all the interest on the debt. Outstanding. So people losing their homes and their businesses and their resources, etc., is built into the system on purpose. Now, when there's an expansion of the money supply, an expansion of, of money in circulation, Peter paying Paul, that, that seems, you know, to, to, to hide it to an extent. But once you um, squeeze the money supply, you take money out of circulation, it becomes obvious that there's nothing like enough money in circulation to pay back all the debt. Try to park your car on a London street or in an increasing number of car parks and you'll be hard pressed to find a pay and display machine. The only way to pay is by your mobile phone to call a central number or by an app such as uh, Ringo or Just Park. Some shops such as the uh, healthy eating chain Tost are even starting to refuse cash. They're only interested in customers who pay by card. The cashless economy is being forced on us, uh, the writer says, by stealth as electronic payment increasingly becomes the only option. But the truth is it's all about greed. Boston Consulting Group estimates that banks and payment companies such as Visa and MasterCard 
currently make one trillion dollars annually worldwide in fees typically paid by the retailer for processing electronic payments for no other reason that there simply is not enough money for everyone to pay back the debt so what do the banks do Ooh, we'll have that and this has been going on for centuries and they've hijacked the real wealth of the world um, by doing this and the next stage which is in my books from the early 1990s is the cashless society you know i was pointing out purely by knowledge of what what this agenda was that they were going to get rid of cash and look look at it cash is flying out of circulation in some places like sweden is almost totally cashless they're shutting down bank branches so you cannot interact with a bank branch locally with cash you have to do it online because that's electronic money and eventually they're going to take electronic cash out of circulation why because um, when you go into a store now or anywhere and you give them a credit card electronic money and they say sorry the system won't accept your card well you can still pay cash but when there's no cash in circulation your electronic money, which is meant to go through a microchip eventually, when they say the system won't accept your, your microchip or your card, you have no other means of purchase. So whoever controls the, 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 the system is dictating whether you can purchase or whether you can't, whether you can eat or whether you can't. And the only other alternative to that would be barter. And I'll tell you what the plan is. The plan is to ban barter, to make it illegal, on the basis that they can't tax it. So that's along the line as well. I'm not saying that there couldn't be good things with things like Bitcoin and stuff like that, as long as cash stays in circulation. That's the key. While cash is in circulation, you have other points of, or ways of purchase. Once there's no cash and you have only cashless digital currencies, then whoever controls them controls everything. And not only that, they can wipe your bank account. If you're a dissident of the system, as this moves on into more extremes, they can wipe your bank account. And it's just gone. Because all it is is figures on a screen. You can wipe figures on a screen in a second. You can, from a central point, crash the entire economy by controlling digital money and digital processes. And the idea eventually problem, reaction, solution, create the problem and then offer the solution, is to have a gigantic crash, which they will instigate, and then to overcome the crash, they will propose a totally new economic system of central control to be the solution to the problem they've created, which is crashing the economy. And the more control they have over money digitally, electrically, the easier it is to do that. This cashless society is one key element in a whole transformation of human society to total control that involves almost every area of our lives. Indeed, it does. You cannot divorce what I've just been talking about the manipulation to the cashless society and the microchipped human from the fact that our freedom of speech and our freedom of communication is being squeezed by the day. And Google, YouTube, owned by Google, Facebook, Twitter, who are increasingly openly, blatantly using algorithms to filter out information that the system doesn't want people to see. But we are in the midst now of a, a plan that's been going on for so long, way, way back, beyond what people could even imagine possible, that is now breaking the surface where more and more people can see it. And yet still, you have the mainstream media, you have mainstream society that just can't see what is there, for goodness sake. Maybe what appeared to be crazy 
was actually true. And daily, we are seeing that is the case. It really is beyond the time for humanity to wake up to the world they live in. <laughs>